So you're now going to test this. So we're actually going to do run an example now, and you're actually going to test these two features to prove that on the M7, how fast you can go around a simple loop. I am going to run exactly the same example, wherever my board's gone, uh, on the Cortex M4, as well on my laptop, so that you can see the differences in reality. So a look at the first example. Have you all got IAR installed with the 30-day license, not the size license? I see some of you have already connected your boards to the uh, laptops. Uh, so have you all got your micro USB cable now? Have you all managed to plug in to your laptops and get the display to light up with icons? So that means Microsoft has not parked anybody's device. Perfect. So these are a few um, key icons and the uh, buttons that are worth remembering uh, for today. To open any project from the hands-on example, you will always be looking for project.eww. So when I tell you to go into the project folder for different example numbers, project eww is double click on it, it will automatically launch your IAR suite. The build button is that strange looking icon there, or F7. So when it's loaded, yeah. So, so the quick shortcut to uh, building your project is F7. To enter debug, it's the old play button from a cassette deck, uh, which is usually on the top right hand part of the icon bar. And when you're in debug, F5 is the uh, shortcut to run the application. So there's just a few quick uh, links to keep you up to speed with some of your other colleagues in the room who've used IAR uh, on many occasions. So now we're going to go into example number one, uh, where we're going to analyze a very simple loop. So what we're going to do in the loop is we're going to accumulate or sum up the elements of an array. So it's a fairly simple loop, fairly small, compact. Uh, when you generate your code, it should pretty much come down to those four instructions there. We'll go around the loop. So you have your load, your add, your sub, and then the branch instruction to loop back to the uh, start again. So based on what you've just seen, how many cycles would the Cortex M4 take to execute that? Six? Seven? Seven's a good number. So we said load and store was at least two. Those are one each, and we said the branch was three instructions. So seven cycles is a fairly good estimate of what the Cortex M4 would take. How about the Cortex M7? Three? Five? Uh, you've missed your dual issue. Remember, all these instructions can be run in parallel. So one instruction, two instructions will be a good estimate of what the M7 can do there. So, so you've got it correct with everything in the single cycle, the single cycle branch, that's correct. But you missed the dual issue part, where you can send each of those to the uh, processing at the same time. So in theory, we should see about seven for the M4 and about two for the M7. So it's what type of answer we're looking for for when we run the example in a second. So if you open example number one from the hands-on, so the average benchmark eWarm example, and you build the code and download into your board and run, and see what type of answers you get from your system. If we open the hands-on projects, F7 Discovery, Average Benchmark, eWarm, and then Project EWW. Projects, F7 Discovery, Average Workbench, and eWarm, and then it's the EWW 
file that you need to double click on. And then on my screen here, IAR environment. So if I press F7 to build, it tells me that my build is up to date. And if you hit the uh, cassette play button to download and enter debug, So on my Cortex M7 device that I've just connected to my board, it takes me 1,024 cycles to do 500 iterations of that loop. So there I'm doing it in about 2.48 cycles. It's taking me to do that simple loop. So we estimated at two cycles. There are some initialization uh, randomizations. You might get a slightly different number, plus or minus usually one or two cycles, um, which is to do with your compiler settings and how the compiler has started up the application on your particular piece of hardware. But pretty much you'll get 1024, 1025, 1023 cycles. Um, for your example. The debug cell will add extra cycles into the loop. So when it hits the debug, so you will not get an accurate calculation uh, of the loop when you've got the debug enabled. Okay, so I think most of you are getting 1024 or if you had your breakpoint in there, you were getting 1034 uh, on the uh, system. 